<laughs> they are just too cute. Remember, questions at wildearth.tv or hashtag Safari Live on Twitter if you'd like to know more about the incredible in Kahumas. So three of the five lionesses have given birth and Michael's wondering about the amber-eyed and youngest lioness. Now they have been mating and is wondering when will we start seeing signs of pregnancy or cubs. So with lions generally they, they don't show till quite long into their, their pregnancy which is a very short pregnancy between 90 and 110 days and you will start seeing the first thing you sort of start seeing is that their nipples start becoming enlarged or engorged as they start, as the mammary glands start working hard and start producing milk. But it, sometimes it can be actually quite difficult to see. Uh, but normally around the two month, two and a half month, almost certainly you should be able to see. No signs yet that I can see. Now, uh, I think, unless Final Control has got confused, a question from Brent. Hi, Brent from Brent. And Brent would like to know, uh, is the survival of all eight cubs up until this point above the sort of normal curve? And so mortality rates are quite high. Um, what are they now? Yes, it is, it is probably above average. Normally by now one or two have disappeared. Uh, but this drought is probably doing them a lot of favours. And... Uh, and they're finding it quite easy uh, to get food, and especially with the amount of buffalo they're killing at the moment. Oh, oh. There we go, that's amber eyes. So we want them to go south from here. We don't want them to go west, and we definitely don't want them to go north. Now, were there any buffalo around the Juma pan today? Let me know, maybe... If they hear the boo of a dugger boy, they might head in that direction. Oh, bite that fly, Amber. Okay, so they're literally about three feet from Eggsy. They're all walking in behind us, and it looks like they're about to head off hunting. Probably find the cubs are going to stay here. And just wait for this lioness to pass. And you can see they come so incredibly close to us. They're right behind us now. They really take no notice. Oh, quickly across to Jamie. There was a brief moment, and I'm sorry I rushed you across here. And there was a brief moment when Tingana looked like he was about to go racing forward and pounce on something. But he's immediately relaxed again. Uh, I think he, he either saw or heard something moving off in the distance and then decided that it wasn't really worth his while. I am going to be speaking very softly in the sighting from here on out since we do have a hungry leopard and he is waiting in ambush to see what he can get. And at some point we'll be able to switch to infrared to be able to see exactly what he's up to. For now, though, he's just looking beautiful. He's relaxed completely. You can see it very, very clearly. Oh, yes. Well, if you doubt me before, he has now relaxed completely. You can see it very clearly in an animal's body language, particularly the big cats, 
when they are focused on hunting something. Their, every line of their body becomes tense with expectation. <coughs> They're almost like coiled springs, full of explosive muscle power. And that's what's going to happen. I think he's decided, instead of actively seeking something, he's going to wait for it to come to him. And we will be here if it does. I'm just listening to the sounds of the bush for a moment. Trying to see if I can hear anything sneaking up on him. But for now, all is quiet. And he's settled back down. This is where the infrared really truly is going to come into its own. Usually we'd be on our way home by now, but we don't have to be anymore. We can sit for as long as we like, within limits, but as long as we like, with this hunting male leopard. Copy that, thanks Rex. I'm gonna move in and take your spot now. Sorry everybody. Rexon just telling me that he had a good, good view from where he was. And that I think is what we shall do. Let's go. So Rexon very, very kindly, and that's of course a name that most of you are familiar with. He's working as a guide at Juma. He very kindly told us to go and take his place. do some chatting and some maneuvering. So for now I'm going to send you back across to those lovely Inkahumas. Now literally those lionesses walked 10 meters and they spotted a herd of Inyala. They're not far so we've got two lionesses off to the left. Uh, one has even gone further to the north and the other lioness has gone behind our vehicle to come up from behind them. So they are already stalking so you can see the light's dropping quite quickly now. Isn't this exciting? So there's an yellow probably about 50 meters. Just keeping quiet. I'm just trying to listen. Can you see where that one went? Oh, she's disappeared. We've still got these two next to us here. Now, they're the most exposed. Look at that very subtle stretch. Now, remember, this is live from the African bush. So sometimes some of these images of cats when they catch animals can be very very graphic and uh, if you are a bit squeamish rather just turn away if they do manage to catch something now those in Yala were walking obliviously along the, the edge of the on the along the top of the crest Look, 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 left, 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 left. Okay, now there's another lioness to the left of her. And there's another one to the right behind us. Look, there, there's Anyala.
Wait, look at the zoom. Is there something bigger at the back there? Is that just a male in Yana? Oh, just in Yana. I thought I saw something bigger there for a second. There's the third lioness. So I've only seen four lionesses so far this afternoon. It does not mean the fifth isn't lying in the drainage line. Said they are hungry, so they definitely are going to hunt tonight. Ah, spotted by Impala. Yeah, that. Pff, pff. Okay, let's keep up with them. See, that one jumped up. Hi, Michelle, who's 12 years old and from Johannesburg. Now, Michelle would like to know how many days a lion can go without eating. Well, Michelle, probably up to about 10 if it really had to. Okay, there we go. I still can see, see them there. Would have been too easy if they just got up and caught for us right immediately. So, Michelle, it, it, it varies. Uh, it also depends on how old they are, what type of condition they're on, but they can go up to 10 days. Um, so, Zander needs to play with the camera and change some settings to get us into night mode. There we go. So now we can see in the dark. were spotted by those in Pala. I'm probably not going to hunt those in Yala and in Pala now, but it looks like they're still going to keep moving. Oh no, maybe there's still something there. You never know, there could be some buffalo bulls around. I'm going to get round up onto the top of the crest where I can see what's going on a little bit. So the lines are moving through the bush like that. And uh, I'm just going to try and get up ahead. There's some more open areas coming up ahead there. And it's going to be easier for me to navigate off-road over there than closer to the little river system here. Now it is going to be quite difficult to keep up with them, especially in this area, but we will do our best. Now, while we catch up with those cats that are on the move, let's go to James and a lazy kitty. Well, well, the cat heard that we're live and she's very interested. She's listening to them calling, listen. There are other lions calling miles away. Both heads are up. This 
was a very, very distant call, everyone. Sounded like one line. Sleepy line. Ooh. Which way is the wind blowing, Graham? Blowing from the left side over our head. So they've turned their faces to the wind there. Maybe there's something out there. We're searching with the thermal camera. We're looking up towards the zebras. Not the one sitting. Like I see. As opposed to the one lying next to them, trying to hide. We're looking over the top of the dead zebra in the direction of the living zebras. They're looking over the top of the dead zebra in the direction of the dead zebra of the living zebras. Let's um let's have a look at the thermal camera if we can. Now, just if you are a new viewer, hello, that's me sitting there. Those are the lions. This is a thermal camera that picks up a heat signature from animals that have heat and, uh, well, that have heat. And strangely, that, um, that zebra still has heat, and yet it is very dead, unless it is masquerading. Perhaps it is masquerading as a dead zebra. It is pretending to be not alive anymore. Uh, I'm obviously being completely facetious. It is very dead, but it shows you that it's not that, uh, the carcass is not that old. Then, those twinkling lights in the top left-hand side of your screen, them is the other zebra we think, and quite possibly mixed in with a herd of wildebeest. And that's what those lionesses are looking towards. Now, if you're wondering why it's a little bit jerky, it's because it's a handheld device being held at the bottom, at least at the back of the vehicle. What are those, Graham? Beefies. Uh, it could be buffalo, everybody. Difficult to tell when you've got one pixel to tell to find what our, what animal you're looking at. But these lions are now looking interested. Now, we've come here to the Mara Triangle, of course. We're hoping to tell the story of a lion-hunted night, a second lion-hunted night. Three nights ago, the pride, the Kichwatembo pride, hunted in the rain and driving wind, and they killed a baby zebra. It was the most fantastic experience. We've spent another two nights with them. One night they sat doing absolutely nothing. The other, they attempted, well, one lioness attempted some hunting, but otherwise they didn't do a great deal. Then yesterday evening, we did spend, who did we spend yesterday evening with? We started with the Kichwas. Oh, very tired, exhausted lion. And then we spent some time with some male lions. They also did a lot of sleeping. Anyway, we think that one of these prides is going to do some hunting tonight. If this lot don't do anything, and, I mean, they do have a dead zebra with them, so the chances of them doing too much, I guess, are pretty small. But they haven't started eating it, which I think is very strange. We don't think they killed it. We think it died after the effects of a river crossing, where a crocodile basically chewed a piece of its underbelly off, and its guts eventually came out, and we think it died here. Why they're not eating it, I'm not sure. They've eaten a little bit of it so far, and one of these lionesses looks like she's lactating to me, but I'm not convinced she's ha she's given birth. I think she's got swollen teats, but to me, it doesn't look like anything's been suckling on them. They may have been killed by those intruding males. We don't know. But you can see they're not full. They're in very good shape, but they're not packed full of meat at the moment. A little bit of a stretch there. That's an interesting thought from Bri Bri May, who says, is it possible the lions might be sitting next to the zebra as a way of camouflaging their own scent before they go on their next hunt? Um, no, I don't think they've thought that far ahead. I think that they're lying here because they're thinking about eating it. But I also think that there's a very big herd of zebra with some lots of little zebra in it. Not very big herd of wildebeest with lots of little wildebeest in it, not too far from here, and we thought they may go and hunt, hunt them. They certainly watched them as the sun began to set, but this lioness looks like she's settling in for a bit of a feed now, and I think that's the older lioness. 
which makes me think that we might be wrong. So we'll sit here for another 10 or 15 minutes. Further up the road, we've heard rumour of males. We might go and check for them. They are, of course, the greatest scavengers out here, which means that they don't often do a great deal of hunting at this time of year. And then we might also go and check on our old pals, the Kichwa Tembo Pride, up, unsurprisingly, on the Kichwa Tembo airstrip. Now, Brent Leo Smith, of course, is following the Inkahuma Pride. They potentially too will hunt tonight, so that would be great. We'll have two lion hunts in two locations with any luck. So, as we link back to him, I'm going to ask Jean Dre to tilt upwards, and I'll show you the twinkling lights of Angama Mara where we are going to go and stay tonight, as we have in abject luxury for the last many nights. It's there. <laughs> Okay, back to Brent and the Inkahuma Pride. Oof, that's nice. So what I'm doing is I'm leapfrogging. Is I can't actually follow them with the lights on through the bush. So what I've done is jumped up, guessed where they're going to pop out. And lucky for me, I'm good at guessing. Because they've popped out every time now. And it looks like they might head towards the Buffalo's Hook waterhole. In search of buffalo, I'm sure. Now, on my way here, I did see a young giraffe, which would also fall within their sphere of interest, but I think, luckily for the giraffe, it's quite far away. just stopping and listening. Well, they're probably listening for any little sound, but with this pride and how much they like buffalo, I'm sure they're listening for that sort of low bellow of a herd of buffalo or a dugger boy. Warrior cats wondering why don't male lions hunt. Now that of course is not true. It's one of the biggest fallacies out in the African bush. If they happen to come across a kill that the females have made, they will definitely take it over. But they spend a lot of time away from the females, so they do do a lot of their own hunting. Okay, let me just try and move here. Okay, so we're right in the middle of the bush at the moment. There is a road up ahead. I'm not sure how far in the dark. I'm just trying to find a way between the trees. The elephant's also done a good job pushing over all the trees here. Okay, let's have a look. They went off through here. I'm going to try to get to the road ahead of them. Watch out there. And watch out here. There's the road. Watch your head. There's always a chance we might lose them, but I'll try not to. Um, we're on a hyena road at the moment. They were just moving sort of northeast. Let's have a look. I don't think they've got too far. Okay, well, we try to find these lions again. 
Uh, let's go see how Jamie's doing with that incredible spotted cat Tingana. Tingana is certainly keeping us busy. He's been on the move the entire time while we've been following him through a very, very tricky vegetation block. Uh, we're just trying to keep up with him. He's on Zoe's road now, but there are other vehicles that have joined the sighting. So we're going to keep up with him as much as possible. I'm just letting Abel come through. There he goes. Let's have a look at him in the road. How awesome does this look in infrared? Isn't it absolutely incredible? And fascinatingly enough, he's actually gone from Warthog Burrow to Warthog Burrow while we've been following him. He went into one at one point, which is amazing to see. Didn't have any luck, obviously. But it's so interesting how he clearly... Oh, goodness. Okay, this is exhausting. He's really keeping us busy. Okay. Are you happy for me to go past him for? Shop, thank you. There we go. Abel's giving us an opportunity to drive behind him. I'm going to duck my head down and we'll try and continue slowly for a little bit along the road, watching him go. And then as soon as we have a, another place that we can pull over, we'll let Abel go ahead. So we're basically leapfrogging. Stopping to lick his paw. No problem. It was quite an interesting block that. That's affirmative. That's easy on these shorter cars though. So yours is just thanking me for keeping with the leopard because <laughs> otherwise we wouldn't have been able to find him again. the leopard on his way towards Mike from Cheetah Plains. Okay, I'm gonna have to pull over to let Abel come through. So just bear with me one moment. Okay, we're gonna pull over. And let Abel go through. Now, Ravi's got a, a complex question about leopard behavior from... So Ravi wants to know, would the leopards, do male leopards, are they able to identify that a cub is theirs? If, could Tingana, for example, identify that Shadow Cubs, Shadow's cubs was, their, was his, given that they do mate with different males? The answer is no, not necessarily. They can be tricked into thinking a cub is theirs when it isn't, but... And the interesting thing about that particular aspect of their behavior, here he goes, I'm going to try to get you a view, is they recognize the female. So they know which females they've mated with and therefore which cubs they think might be theirs, but they don't know for certain and they do get tricked into believing that the cub is theirs. Into the block we go again. While we reposition, I think Brent has done it again. He's managed to relocate the Inkahumas. Let's go and have a look. So we guessed they were coming for a drink and they've just finished. 
And I finished drinking as we got here. Now they are heading towards the Buffalo Hook waterhole, which is much, much nicer for us because they've decided to walk on a road rather than through the bush. down the road. I'm going to wait till they get up this little steep bank embankment and uh, I'm going to get around ahead of them and just wait. But we don't want to get too far away from them just in case he disappears. They disappear south into the block. Look at them testing the air. Noses up. Isn't this just exciting? I mean it's pitch black out here. Hans Kazim says, does our vehicle not influence the hunt? It can. We're very careful to make sure it doesn't, though. And uh, what we do is what I'm doing now is I try leapfrog or, or move around with them. And sometimes I try to be ahead of them. Now, in doing that, I can stop the vehicle. And also, you can read from their body language when what they're about to do. Oh, I need a reverse line. Although the camera can see in the dark, I'm afraid I can't. So what we're going to try to do is give them enough space to not influence the hunt um, by utilizing the road. So they've moved off, just off to the, the right of me here. So I'm going to head up onto the next road, which is just up ahead. And uh, we've got our fingers crossed that they don't cross this road because this is the northern edge of our, our traverse. Now, the thing that can affect the hunt more then actually following them in a car, because during the day we also do it, is actually lights. And that's why we've got this infrared system. Now, in, it can actually benefit and influence them, because you can blind an Impala or something like that with a spotlight. Okay, there they are there. Have they gone? F they're still walking. Okay, so there they are. Oh, they're just at the edge of the light. Not right to the left. There. That's a line. There we go. And you can see, there we go, there she is. Okay, so now I know where they're going. So what I'm gonna do is as I said I'm gonna move up ahead get myself in a spot on top of this crest so I can, if there are any animals up ahead, uh, we'll be sort of on the edge between where the lions are going. Oh, it looks like they've laid, uh, gone to sleep though. And let's just have a quick look anyway, regardless if there is any other animals up ahead. Now, Herbert called on the radio earlier today it was one lone buffalo bull somewhere around this, this, this old quarry here that was used to uh, build the roads. So maybe they're on the scent of that old buffalo bull. I don't see him at the moment. No. So he was sleeping somewhere around here. So maybe they heard him while they were sleeping during the day. It's not that far from where they've spent their day. It did look like they've gone flat. Now that's very common with lions, is that they walk for 20 minutes, sleep for an hour, move for 10 minutes, sleep for two hours. So they sleep on average about 20 hours a day. But I think they're after this single buffalo bull that was around here. So it looks like they laid down somewhere around here. Oh, 
Well, they've given us the slip yet again. No, that happens. Could just be stopping to listen for a while. And you can just make out the other lioness lying behind there. What well, one of them? See all four now. Well, summer is certainly here. The bugs are out and about. Hi, Jason. And Jason likes to know. Where the lions rely more on their sense of smell or hearing when they're looking for prey. So generally they will rely more on their sense of both actually. But I would say hearing. I'd say hearing is quite, quite important. Stations the 4 for the Inkohuma Pride are now mobile. They are just to the east of Hyena Road on the firebreak. Sorry, someone was asking where the lions were. Copy, thanks. Sit here while they groom. They keep testing the air with their noses. Standing by. It looks like they're going south again. That's good for us. We don't want them to go north. North is outside of Juma. Oh, big stretch. That's a problem with not being able to see where you're driving, so I had to turn my lights on. Okay, there we go. They're up on the move again. They're about to drive, uh, walk past us. I'm driving. So you can see the one line is disappearing ahead of us. This is that area where that single buffalo was earlier today. So they could be smelling for him, or listening for him, or both. Isn't this exciting? There we go, see there's another lioness there. You can see her through the gap in the trees just. And then the rest of them are walking into the deep darkness. Sorry. 
she should follow shortly. Now the rest of the females have already headed across the fire break into that big block. Now that is the same area where Jamie found them hunting. Oh, there we go. Okay, well, I'm going to stick with these lines. While I do that, let's go across to Jamie. Guys, this might be the last few moments that we can spend with Tingana. He's about to cross one of, into one of the most tricky patches of vegetation that we get out here. Uh, there's going to be no way that we can follow him if he crosses this road. No, he's nearly, nearly there. And there he goes. Across main access. And that is that. And that's, we're going to say, farewell to Tingana, unfortunately. I don't think I can follow him. I'm going to try, but I don't think I can. Let's give it a go. What's the worst that could happen? There he's gone flat. Nose up. <laughs> I can't go in here, I'm sorry. I can't risk it. I'll smash the car to pieces if I try and go in here now in the dark. I'll give it a go, but if I find that we are not managing, then we'll pull out. Thank you, Tingana, for an awesome sighting. A good few hours spent in the company of this magnificent male leopard. No problem, Abel. I think I'm going to be pulling out soon as well. I don't think I can follow him through here. Everybody, oh goodness, Rusty's groaning, her protest. He might be following that awful smell, and gosh, is it awful. I don't know what it is. Something's died here a couple of days ago, and we never found what it was. Oopsie daisies. I think that's where he's going. He's going to go scavenge. But where's he gone? I've lost. There he is. Maybe that's what he's after. Let's try and stick with him for just a little bit longer. Because I'm sure... Oh, it stinks in here. I'm sure he's on his way to scavenge a carcass. Perhaps there's an old kill he's going to go investigate. Watch out, Dave. That's going to flick at you. You okay? Go for it. Good stuff. Bravo, man. Oh. <clears throat> I won't break myself, Rebecca, don't worry. <laughs> or Dave, don't worry, I won't link I won't break Dave either. Here's our leopard. <laughs> awesome. He's certainly making us work for this particular sighting. But he's sniffing all around here. He's looking to find wherever this rotten smell is coming from. Leopards are not above scavenging one little bit. Okay, I'm going to have to do some concentrating as we go through here. So while we do that and while we try and stick with him, let's head back across to the Mara and find out what James is up to. Right, we're back in the Mara Triangle, everybody. There was a bit of action. This lioness got up. We thought she was going to go stalking towards the herd of wildebeest up to the north, or at least to the west of where she's now sitting. However, she started heaving, and then she had an enormous vomit. Now, that is disgusting in and of itself, but it does rather support my theory that perhaps that zebra is off. It might not be such a tasty meal and I wonder if the crocodile's rotten flesh and crusted teeth didn't infect this poor thing before it d dropped dead here. It uh, can no longer see out of that eye. It is however still very warm interestingly 
and uh, we know that from the thermal imaging camera which is also now much as that zebra is out of commission but uh, this one not permanently because it is uh, raining slightly you may just hear the gentle pitter patter of rain on the umbrella that our fearless leader is holding over Jean Dre, our equally fearless cameraman. The lions, however, having looked like they might get up and move, are now not looking like they're going to get up and move. But I do think it's fascinating that they're not eating the zebra. Let's have a quick recap, and then I'll just tell you quickly about the lions of the area that we've seen today. Earlier, we had reports of a pride of 12 down on the Tanzanian border. We didn't go down there because it's very far and there's no signal here. We could have given, gone down there um, if we'd had to, or if we'd wanted to. There's no reason or no human impediment to stop us going down there. Then, we saw those seven lions earlier, which unfortunately we wanted to open the show on but a great big storm came in and made a mess of our signal so we weren't able to do that those lions apparently of the serena pride looked like four lionesses and three young males and we have huge action here at this sighting at the moment anyway we left to leave them they weren't going to hunt tonight they were extremely fat they've been eating substantially during this migration season in the mara triangle then we went down uh, to the crossings and our tracker in chief peter brat went up towards the kitratembo airstrip where the kitratembo pride were lurking one of them extremely fat he didn't manage to see too many of the others but none of them looking particularly enthusiastically like they wanted to hunt then reports of three males in this area and we're probably going to go and do a little fossick around and see if we can't find them they may be on the hunt we don't think they've eaten for a while they certainly were looking well relatively well fed yesterday but they weren't panting maybe those three are on the hunt so we we'll probably go in a few minutes to see if we can't find them and we'll do a loop around towards where we can see the thermal heat signature of the buffalo and the wildebeest that we had earlier around here and we'll see if they're not being stalked by those three males we might be lucky because I don't think uh, well uh, I don't know what these lionesses are going to do I don't think I think they're pretty hungry um, but they're not eating the zebra, and I think that's rather bizarre, especially given that that one has had a hard vomit in the last half an hour. Jen B, a nice one from you. You're wondering if, if I think that that zebra is too infected for them to eat. Would a hyena eat it? I might just put a caveat here. I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not convinced that the zebra is too infected for them to eat. I put it forward as the theory for why it has remained like that uneaten during the course of the day by these lions and perhaps why it is that one of the lions was sick. I'm not saying that that is definite. The biggest and quickest way to get egg on your face out here is to say something definitely because then lions and every other animal out here will almost always turn around and do the precise opposite. That said, do I think that the hyenas would be able to eat it if it is too infected for the for the um, lions. Uh, I don't know, they definitely have a more acidic digestion, but a lion's digestion is pretty acidic, you know, they've got a pretty pretty strong constitution. So I'm going to say yes, maybe, but I'm also going to say that if this thing did die of an infection, there's so much else for the hyenas to eat, that were they to come across here and smell some kind of pathogen in that zebra, I think they'd leave it alone. I think they'd basically move on and see what else they could find. Nice one. Thank you, Jen. What is a fascinating theory from Carol in Atlanta? Car yeah, Carol, you say, is it possible, you would have thought maybe, the metabolic heat of the bacteria consuming the inside of that zebra, maybe it died with an extremely high fever, and maybe that is what is contributing to the to the thermal signature either there's metabolic heat in there from the bacteria which I'm not so sure about but maybe there is um, maybe a diet of a temperature and just doesn't cool down yet that's a really nice theory thank you Carol and the only bits of it that have been eaten are a little piece out from under the tail there that's where the lion who vomited was eating from and then the ear off the face and that the younger lion ate she hasn't had any, doesn't seem to have had any ill effects.
Ravi, another one from you about whether or not if this thing died of an infection, would a vulture be able to eat it? Yeah, I would say yes. You know, I mean, there's very little out here that rots away completely without being eaten. Um, so eventually something is going to eat the zebra. It's not just going to lie here, I don't think, and rot completely. So, Ravi, I would say yes, vulture is probably able to eat it. We know that they are specifically designed to eat the most rancid flesh in the world. So perhaps they'd be okay with it. Um, I mean, I don't. I think there are probably some very specific things in various animals and birds' digestions that um, allow them to eat various things that other animals can't. And perhaps vultures and even hyenas would be able to cope with the disease that the zebra had. And maybe the lions not so much. So like I say, I think we're going to spend another five minutes here or so. And then we're going to head off north and see if we can't find the males or the lions of the Kitratembo pride. Are these two still fast asleep, Jandri? Indeed they are. Now we have spent quite a lot of time with flat cats. But that's simply because our timing has been such that the cats have generally eaten basically as we've got to them. Like these two thought, well, these two we thought were going to with the zebra. But as I say, I think they look pretty hungry. But let's see what happens as we go forward. They keep smelling something on the wind. That's why they keep lifting their heads, heads I think. Ooh. Ooh. What a pity it is we don't have the thermal imager. If the rain stops, we will absolutely pop it up. Sicky lioness has not picked up her head. She's feeling a bit low. There's no reason that lioness, if something comes along here, there's no reason she wouldn't be able to kill it on her own. As I said, lionesses on their own often kill as much or kill enough to eat as much, if not more, than prides that have three or four lionesses in them. I also think that there are males calling somewhere way to the east of where we are now. And sometimes she lifts her head and turns, and you just hear in the very far distance, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, oh. ho, ho. Right, unfortunately it seems like the Inkahumas have also decided that life is rather too tough for them and they've decided to have a bit of a snooze, but Brent will tell you about that while we wait and decide what to do here. Day, if they need to come to us. We are still with Tingana, and he is settled. We're sitting completely silent with our lights off. So we're sorry about that. We lost a sound with Brent, but we're still here, and your timing is impeccable, because just a couple of meters away from him is an impala, not too far away from us. And I'm really, for his sake, Hoping that this time he is successful. Come on, Tingana. I can't see the Impala anymore, but they were just ahead of us. And now it's a game of patience. They haven't seen him. And we're just going to sit and wait patiently, just like he has to do, to see how this situation unfolds. I can't turn on my lights now to see where the Impala have gone, 
because I run the risk of either dazzling them and obviously making them more vulnerable or actually exposing Tingana and making him more obvious to them. It's amazing, sometimes leopards when they are hunting, they look completely relaxed, but that's not the case at all. They are just waiting, and they are the masters of the game of patience. He's got very little, not very little energy left, but he is thin and hungry, and he doesn't want to waste any of his energy, his precious, precious energy, on a failed hunting attempt. We're just going to sit and wait and see what happens. This is where the infrared really comes into its own. I'm so glad we managed to stay with him. It's been a bit tricky, but we've managed it. And I'll have a chance to fix Rusty tomorrow if we have any problems. The one thing I'm really hoping for is not a flat tire. <laughs> Because right now it's very dark and we're very much away from the road. This is incredible. I've been so excited about the possibility of seeing a leopard with this infrared. I didn't quite expect to see a hunt, but this is the way that the evening has taken us. Where are these Impala? They were just here. And they haven't given off any alarm calls, so they don't know that he's here. They're just waiting for them. And I can't see a thing. It is pitch black out here. It was purely by luck, actually, that we managed to locate him. And Chai Connie, while we wait for Tingana to launch himself at the Impala, you want to know if, <coughs> excuse me, if males or female leopards have a higher success rate. I think it's much of a muchness, to be honest. I don't think that there's necessarily a, gen a gender skew in terms of success rate. Um, females, of course, go for smaller prey, and the males for larger prey. They could be after, I mean, both males and females are capable of catching impala, but then the females will target things like Steenbock and Dacre more regularly than the males. So I don't think there's any particular success rate between the two. I mean, Karula's always been particularly successful in terms of her hunting, but I don't know if that's just because we spend a lot of time with her annies up. Impala must have moved off. Oh no, no, maybe not. He's made his way a little bit closer. Thank you, boy, for not disappearing. Ooh, and whatever it is that we are sitting next to smells horrendous. Just by the way, oh, it smells like old carcass. It's revolting. Anyway, definitely worth bearing the smell to get to witness these moments. Now, of course, leopards have a low success rate, as do lions. Then leopards are probably slightly higher. You're probably looking at about... Mm, ooh, <laughs> the wind just changed direction. You're probably looking at a success rate of maybe 10% mm, of the kills that they initiate, whereas lions are slightly lower. He must be aware of the fact that there's something here. It's obviously not of any interest to him. Perhaps he already knows that it's been finished off by hyenas and vultures or whatever it was.
while we're sitting here, I'm listening to the sounds of the evening. I can hear the frogs trilling away. A lot of toads. I think I even hear a red toad. And, fascinatingly, I can hear a white-faced scops owl. While we sit in silence and wait to see what Tingana does next, let's head back across to Brent because we're both lucky enough to have cats on screen. So we're still sitting with the Incaumas and not much movement at the moment. I've stopped just short of the Buffalo's Hook waterhole, probably about a hundred meters. And I was hoping they might find that old buffalo bull. But this is what lions do. They move, they sleep. They move, they sleep. Now we're sitting in the pitch black. Some gorgeous stars out there tonight. Very quiet, just the incessant noise of the frogs. I can hear about four different species down at Buffalo's Hook. I was hoping the lions were going to head down there. They've already had a drink at one of the small pans. But when it comes to lions and when it comes to seeing those incredible cats in action, patience is your most important tool. Yeah, that's it. Yawn and move, please. Miss in Kahuma. So the other two are lying behind. We can't really see them. Oh, there's an impala right behind them. Um, well spotted Eggsy. Yours is an impala right next to your vehicle. Oh. It's a nyala. Not impala, sorry. Apparently it, did, it spotted the lions and took off. You can see that one. Must have noticed it as it ran away. Now, with eight little cubbies and y'all is not the biggest meal, but there are opportunists. Now, if I turn my head away from my monitor, I cannot see that line at all. It's so funny how habit you habitually look, because I know the line there, even though I can't see it. Oh, oh she's using us. She's, she's stalking, she's right next to me now. She's coming around the front of the car. Isn't this incredible? There she is, look at that. Now we can't move at the moment. Now this is why we've got these infrared lights. For these moments like this, Just turning on the bigger infrared. Looks like everything's going to happen behind us. Just see where that other line is for me, please, Under. That was on to our right here. Yeah? She's still there. We'll keep an eye on her. That other lioness has gone to some thick bush behind us.
She's obviously seen how that other lioness has moved, but she's not as interested. Hi, Abraham. Abraham's wondering, do all big cats have the same vision during the day as during the night? Um, during the day, their, their vision is better because of the amount of light. But you can see at night about eight to ten times more than a human being can. So they use every little bit of ambient light um, to see. So what we see is black, they'll see. Probably very similar to what you're seeing on your screen now. So infinitely better to what we can. I'm just keeping quiet. Now, if that other lioness makes it an attempt, we should be actually able to hear her feet beat. But it looks like they might have given up. They're coming towards us, so they've given up. There we go. So they might head down towards the Biffles Hook water hole. So there I can see... Oh, there yeah, a bit of light there now. I can see three. They're about to pass right behind the car. Yeah, I need to put my lights on so we can move. I'm going to go behind us. There they are, just parallel to us now. Let's try and get down to the road. The road's not too far, fortunately. Now, Tash Michelle's wondering, does a, a single lioness stay with the cubs when the rest go on the hunt? No, often they'll leave them completely alone in a thicket like they were there. Now, not great news for us is the direction they've decided to go. They are heading north, and we're not too far away from our right, so boundary. So I'm just going to get onto the road now. So probably only about 70 or 80 meters, uh, maybe a little bit more, uh, to the edge of our, northern edge of our traverse. Now let's hope that they don't go across. If they do cross, I know what we're going to go look for next. Do you know what we're going to look for next, Eggsy? Frogs. I like frogs a lot. Here they go, they're going to pop out right next to us now. Smelling around. What she spotted, I think it was a ground beetle. some grass to help aid with digestion. So, all four are right in front of the vehicle at the moment. They 
Isn't that incredible? Absolutely pitch black. Now, they're going into a little river system, so I'm going to go around to try to keep up with them. Okay, so before they get in there, I'm going to move. So we're not going to be able to follow straight through there because it's really thick. It's going to take us a little while to try and get around. So as I was saying, it's going to take us some time to get to the other side of this little river. It's really thick, Tumbuti thickets in there, we, one of the trees we don't drive over, one of the slow growing trees. So be very careful where you off road. Okay, so while we move around, uh, let's try and go see what Tingan is up to with Jamie. hunting and I don't want to in any way compromise his state and his activities for this evening so it's so dense in here that we will run the risk of wrecking the car a and B I can't see him all the time so I can't know if we're going to in any way hamper his efforts so unfortunately that is that. I know this block of old. I know it's impossible for us to get in during the day. It's going to be even more tricky at night. What we can do is move back towards the... Oh, oh I thought he was going to sit down. Is move back towards the road to see whether or not we can't meet up with him there. But unfortunately, that is that. The end of a wonderful Tingana sighting. It was absolutely amazing. Very, very cool. Negative. Been trying to figure it out. Uh, there was an injured buffalo here a couple of days ago. Maybe it was that. Okay. Mark was just asking me what smells so bad in this particular area. All right, we're going to have to try and figure out a way around and out of here. There's quite a few fallen trees, and it's going to be quite tricky. Let's see if we can get out. All right. Where's the road? That's the next question. We wish Tingana all the best as he goes about his hunting endeavors. I hope he's successful, and hopefully tomorrow on the Sunset Safari, we will be able to spend a little bit of time with him and his freshly made kill. I do hope that is the case. And just a reminder that we will be changing times as of tomorrow. So the Sunset Safari will be at 3.30 Central African time till 6.30. And then the Sunrise Safaris will be 5.30 to 9.30. While I attempt to navigate my way out of here, let's send you back across to James and his lions. We found a lioness, everybody. We don't know what she's doing here, who she is. She seems to be stalking towards the others. And we've just done a sort of loop around. We found a herd of wildebeers going at high speed. Now this lioness looks like she's hunting to me. There were supposed to be three within this little pride. And let's watch and see what happens here. Now, she looks like she's pregnant to me. Don't think it's one of the same ones. We've done a very small kind of loop from where we last saw you. Uh, she's smelling. She's smelling other lions. It's either phlegm and grimace. For those of you who don't know what that is, that's the opening of a tract to the organ of Jacobson or the vemoronasal organ, 
veromonasal organ, sorry. And what that does is interpret pheromones. You see how swollen she is on the belly. But again, no obvious proper suckle marks. Hooray! Well, we've got a lion moving. Let's follow her. We've also got Graham Wallington sitting on the roof. So quite possibly he will slide off. Hold on, Graham. I'm just going to turn around, keep, try and keep her in the infrared beam. She's stalking straight towards where those wildebeest were running, everyone. This is great. That's it, I'm afraid. We are now stuck. <laughs> no. Everyone, I'm afraid this is a bit of a a bit of a disaster. We came off road, we've gone into a rut and we are now immobile. Oh, uh, I can't make it move at all, Brian. Ah, oh, no, man. I'm going to give it one rev, but I, I really think it's it's done. Yeah, we're on the diff. Oh, God. Okay, we're going to link back to South Africa. And let's try and find out what's going to happen here. We'll try and get ourselves out of here. Back to Jamie. Hopefully that line won't kill while we're getting out of here. Dear, oh dear, poor James and co. A very unfortunate for them. That very nearly happened to us a few times this evening with Tingana, so I completely sympathize. Not all that easy finding one's way around in the dark and then accidentally driving over or driving into a place that you shouldn't so I completely sympathize with them we've all been there done that right we're going to try and locate Tingana I think he's probably just moved off a little way and then gone to lie down but we're gonna try and see if we can't figure out exactly where he went this is one of his favorite routes he likes to stroll along this road and I'm hoping he might do that now he came in this direction Please, Tingana, come to the road. Aha, I see you. Yeah, I got him. Um, he's now going back in the same direction. He's going to pop out there in that open patch. Well, he was going to pop out. There he is. And he's gone. Oof. Going straight back to where he came from. Could be walking past there, Dave. Definitely. Huh. That was easier than I expected it to be. But now it's difficult because I can't go back. Let me try rolling backwards. Hopefully he stays parallel to the road. Oopsie. Okay. I have lost my leopard, unfortunately. I think it will be the last time we get a chance to see him. Let's head back to Brent and his lions. Link when they're gone. You are stay crossing onto the eastern side.
Um, oh, okay, sorry, I'm concentrating on where the lines are going, not trying to lose them. Uh, apparently, we are live, so hi, welcome to a live night drive. And we're following the Inkahuma pride on the prowl. And uh, they've been giving us a bit of a hard time in this little river system that flows into the Buffleshook waterhole. I'm just trying to get out of it at the moment so we can get around. I think they're going to pop out just ahead of us here. Now we are trying our best to keep with them. So it's awesome when we stop with the infrared, but when I need to move, I unfortunately have to do have to put my lights on as there are many trees and stumps and things. And the last place I saw them... Oh, there they are. Hello, girls. Now they're sniffing around here, and Herbie did say he had male lion tracks in this area uh, at some point today. So they might be sniffing out a male. Well, not sniffing him out as per se, as sniffing where he's been. Sniffing the scent mark, getting the updates, the news from his urine. Going, ladies. Right now, you can hear the frogs as we get closer to the water. Austin is when we do lines pick up the infrared lights. They apparently can just see it, but when I, I did some research on it, apparently um, not that it would make a massive difference to them uh, from what, what they would normally see. Why do you want to go in here, ladies? Oh dear. Um, okay, I'm going to try move out ahead of them again and going into some very thick stuff again, keeping us on our toes then, Kahuma girls. So while we try and find a way through here, uh, let's go back across to Jamie and Tinga. Hello, spotted mischief. Sorry, not still with a leopard, but with a hyena instead. And the reason I say mischief is we had some interesting moments with hyena last night, as one of them attempted to come into camp whilst we were all still awake and sitting round the fire. I wonder if he's looking for whatever smells are so incredibly bad. Let's see if we can't catch up with him around the corner. Whee! I thought I'd found Tingana again, actually, for a second there, but it wasn't. It was the hyena. And in fact, the animal I saw earlier where I said, there he is, I found him again, actually might have been the hyena again. Where are you, mister? Where did you go? Oh, missus. Didn't have a chance to see whether it was a male or a female. Where'd it go? Aww. Where did you go? Huh. That's unfortunate. Hyena just vanished. Though, uh, for our new viewers, that was a spotted hyena. Now, spotted hyena to hyenas, despite their very poor reputation, and I haven't given up just yet, by the way, 
to try further along Galago Pan. Our spotted hyenas have this terrible reputation as being just pure scavengers and thieves and dirty, filthy dirty. Look, okay, they're a bit dirty um, and a bit smelly as animals, but they are, have a very unfair reputation. They're incredibly intelligent and very, very complex creatures that are fascinating to sit and watch and spend time with. They are also incredibly efficient predators and they are hunters within their own right. So they are more than capable of hunting and taking down prey, working together in their clans, which is what you call a, rather than a pride of lions, it's what you call a, a clan of hyenas. Okay, let's try this way around. And they are definitely one of our favorite animals. Now we were fortunate enough right up until recently to have a hyena clan living right on top of our door, our front doorsteps basically. So they had a den site, we got to watch the little cubs growing up, tumbling around. It was absolutely amazing and we spent many, many enjoyable hours with the wonderful hyenas. But only recently they have decided to abandon us and they've moved to the Manuleti, which is a reserve, reserve to the north of us. Okie dokie, I'm gonna go looking for I think I've given up on Tingana for now. I'll go look for our hyena. Let's go back to Brent and his lions. The lions are now in stalk mode. They've spotted something up ahead. I've switched off. We've gone dark. I don't know what's up ahead. Apparently yours can see a stenbok up ahead of them. That'll be a very small meal for the lions. But that's that they are absolute opportunists. Even if they could, a scrub hair they would catch. You can see their body language has changed a little bit now. Not as intent as it was a minute or so ago. Remember, this is live from South Africa, and we are hunting with four lionesses. We're almost part of the pride we've been with them so long. It's amazing how they can just melt into that. There she is, up to the left. Or oh, there's another one moving there. So one's laid down. Oh no, they're still stalking, they're still stalking. Look at that movement. Yours, there's one line is still stalking something directly in front of you. Um, probably 20 meters from the cut line. Isn't this exciting? Now, lions don't have the most successful hunting rates. They're probably about between 10 and 15 percent of everything they stalk or chase to their catch. So only about one and a half times out of 10 will they actually catch something. Look, there we go, you can just see her melting behind that bush, just see that movement there. It's incredible how lithe, lithe, they're hunting something. We don't know what it is. Is that other lioness still sleeping? No, I think she's moved. Yeah, she's gone. Let's just check in front of us. Okay, 
We're going to move forward with our lights off. Easy. You're going <laughs> to be my eyes. This is quite an experience. Driving, looking at a monitor. Okay, it looks okay. Ooh, this is quite scary. <laughs> I'm just going to make sure. I'm going to find a way through the... Oh, let's go around that one. Don't know what's underneath it. Isn't this, isn't this quite exciting? Uh, about 60 or 70 meters from our northern boundary. And there we go, there's one. Oh no, she's just walking now. Um, let's show. I was going to call Jamie in, but let's just have a look, let's see if they cross the boundary first, because they, they are very close to our, the northern edge of our traverse area. Standing by. Yours has just said a lioness has taken off behind him, run down back towards the north or to the. Oh, there we go. It sounds like they might have caught something. Hold on. Hold on, guys. Isn't this exciting? Okay, we've got one lioness here. Yours is saying, come, 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 come. So, I don't know. We've got one lioness right next to us. Did that other lioness catch something small? Oh, there they're running, they're running again. It's buffalo. They're onto a herd of buffalo. Look at that, isn't this amazing? Right next to us, they're chasing buffalo. Hold on, we're gonna stick with them. Oh, they got him, they got him, they got him, they got him. Go white light, Eggsy, white light, if you can. Can you switch to normal light? Normal. Yeah, go to normal. Isn't this incredible? I know this is... I know this is difficult for some people to watch, but this is absolutely amazing. The incredible Inkahumas do it again. Well, it's not all over yet. So I haven't switched the car off in case the buffalo comes in this direction. Now that... Okay. I know that's a terrible sound. But this is Africa. This is nature. This is life. I'm shaking with excitement. So what they're trying to do, you see how they're going for his haunches in the soft spot at the back of his legs when they're trying to get him down on the ground. Once he's on the ground, a lot of the battle has been won. Now you see, the other way they bring down, once that buffalo is on the ground, they're going to try to go for its throat or its nose. Look at that, that lioness has been on top the whole time. She's just not letting go. You can see how she's chewing in there. Every little bit of loss of blood and all that will help bring him down. Just see where he goes. Now you've always got to be careful in these situations that you don't put the vehicle in the wrong place. See, 
Ooh, we nearly got that lioness. But you see what she's doing? She's keeping him distracted while the others work on the back. Look, look, see how she's trying to pull his back leg out to get him on the ground? Oh, she's fallen off. Oh, now he's, all right, she's back on. Isn't that amazing? Look at that agility. Look how she's opened up that wound and that blood, as that blood seeps, it's going to weaken him slowly but surely. Now, I know this is sensitive, guys. Um, if you are not comfortable with this type of stuff, please rather don't watch. This is live and this is nature. He's putting up a proper fight. And you can see how the lions avoid those rapier-like horns of the buffalo. This is a battle that's being played out in the African bush for the last 200,000 or so years that lions and buffalo have coexisted. Look at, look at, she's going for that Achilles tendon. Look, isn't that incredible? She's trying to weaken him, get him down onto the ground. Oh, he nearly fell there. At that isn't that amazing look at that agility she fell off and she was back on there in a split second now it's going to be interesting to see which lioness once they get him down goes for the throat just in case he decides to charge this way we're going to move back a bit Sometimes it can take as long as an hour and a half uh, for them to get a buffalo completely dead. You can still see he's got quite a lot of fight left in him. Ah. Uh -huh. 
at that, you can see how. Look. You can see how the blood's starting to flow more freely, and that will weaken him slowly. Now remember, guys, as hard as this is, the lions have to eat. They've got those eight cubs to feed. See how that lioness keeps trying, they keep trying to get to the front. They keep trying to grab him by the nose or by the throat. But there's still far too much fight in him yet. And they don't want to risk a serious injury at those horns. Look how he just walks with those lines on top of him. He still hasn't given up yet. Oh dear, my earpiece has come out. Just give me a second, there we go, it's back in. Now Jamie's also arrived. Let's get in a bit closer then, right at the edge of the light there. going to move around, get on the right side of him. Oh, he's walking with all those lines on his back. He's just disappeared behind a termite. Okay, let's go to Jamie. She's got a better view. We've just arrived on the scene and oh my goodness, what a scene to be greeted with. The Inca Hummer's on the top of the buffalo and this is a not at all easy for us to watch. It's always incredibly, incredibly difficult. Sorry, yours. Okay, I'm going to reposition in a moment to get a better view. Sorry, yours. <coughs> thank you. Awesome, thank you. Oh, this is unbelievable. This is so warm to watch something like this. The Inkwoman is proving once again what a phenomenal force they are. A serious force to be reckoned with. Let's go over to Brent, who's got a slightly better view. They nearly got him down there. Um, oh, look at that hook. He nearly got that lioness. Oh, we're going to get out of here. See, they're still trying to get, get onto that front side of him. Absolutely amazing. Now, a buffalo bull like that can weigh 1,500 pounds. Each lioness probably only weighs around 300 pounds. See, they're going for those Achilles tendons. They're desperately trying to get this buffalo down. Once he's on the ground, it's going to be much easier for them to get in and around that mouth um, safely. Inkahumas are incredible buffalo hunters. Sorry, Eggsy. It's rather a stick than a buffalo.
See how he's trying to hook, and that's one of the reasons the lions go for that exact spot when they jump onto the back of the buffalo, just behind the shoulder blades. You see there, it's just out of reach of where he can hook back with his head. And he's almost got his tail completely off. I know this can be very difficult to watch, guys, but this is the lion's meal. It's, it's the survival for those eight Nkuma cubs. It's a big buffalo bull like this. It's a lot of meat for that family. You can actually hear her crunching in. She's reached the bone, the vertebra in his back, that lioness on the back. You can actually hear her chewing on the, on the, on the bones. Oh, see that? Those lionesses are trying, waiting for a half gap. If they can get onto the nose, it's a very common tactic that lions use on big animals like buffalo. If they can get onto the nose, um, what they do is they bite into that nose, and uh, then what happens is it actually starts to slowly drown on its own blood. Okay, so I know you're still listening to me, but you're looking from Jamie. Isn't this incredible? Look at that. No, I'd say the buffalo's chances of escaping become less and less with every second. Here we go, you can hear the boat crunch. Standing by. No, yours, please keep it, it's nice light. Thanks very much. Oh, there, he's nearly down, he's nearly down. He nearly fell down. Oh, there we go. Have they got him? They've got him down. Now, who's going to be the brave lioness who goes for the throat or the nose, gets near those horns? Look, there we go. She's got, she's got, oh, no, she didn't quite get there. There we go, look, 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 she's going there. I wonder who that is, she's going for the throat. She's got safely under the horns, now she's gonna go for that nose grip. Now, as we get that nose grip, she, she bursts the, the vein, she digs into the nose, and that buffalo will slowly drown. But it's very, it's still dangerous, those horns are still there. But when the buffalo's down, the lions have generally, they've won. Now, I know this is difficult. That buffalo is not dead, and the other lions are starting to feed already. That is not unusual behavior. I know you're looking, Jamie. I'm just going to try to get around to the other side of the kill. Oh, no, we're going to sit there. We're going to sit there. We're going to sit. Look at that. Okay, then. 
Let's go. What do you think, Sunday? Let's go around to the other side. We're just going to get ourselves in the right spot. How's that, Sunday? The faster they get on to that nose, the quicker this ends. It's nearly over now. Perfect, Jaws. No. You can hear those bellows are changing a little bit. There's almost gurgling in the mouth. And that's because of the blood. Starting to gurgle. You can see actually how strong a lioness is there. She's getting kicked in the face. No, that's not stopping her. This is hard to watch. Now this is one of the joys of being out after dark. Being able to see the big cats hunt. the blood starting to gurgle out of that buffalo's nose. Yeah. Oh, I'm starting to struggle. 
is definitely getting much weaker now. Incredible in Kahuna's Buffalo Hunters. Extraordinary. And you can see now some of the lioness, or the single lioness at the back, she's resting. Now, it would have taken a massive amount of effort for these lions to bring down. Or could there be a male coming? Now, there were tracks of a male around earlier. be a male on the way. Now any self-respecting male lion within 10 kilometers of here would have heard that. And a male lion is not going to pass up a free meal. Or she could go back and fetch the cubs. That could be where she's off to. in a way to suffocate that buffalo. Now of course there's no standard sort of ranking or hierarchy amongst a lioness and Romy's wondering who gets to jump on, who gets to grab the dangerous end. Is it the same lioness every time or is it, does it vary? Well, Romy, I actually saw three different lionesses on top of this buffalo today and I've seen different lionesses go for that kill grip on buffalo. So I just think whoever happens to be in the right position or maybe the lioness that put the least effort into actual bringing down of the buffalo. As you can see that lioness is really tired and she was up on top, probably one of the lionesses that were on top for quite a while and that takes incredible physical strength to hold on to that bunking, that bucking buffalo. I mean, and I think probably the, the, the lioness that's in the best position and probably the least exerted from the, the rest of the hunt will grab that all-important nose or throat hold. Now, with lionesses, you don't see the, the throat hold as often as the nose hold on big buffalo bulls. As it, they might, their jaws might not be big enough to clamp close the larynx, but male lions will, will, will use that throat hold even on a big buffalo. Again, I do and again, apologize, I do to, apologize to our sensitive viewers. I know this is difficult to watch, um, but this is alive, and we are here to observe nature in all its facets. So this is part of nature, a crucial part of nature, and not something people get to see very often. So this is absolutely incredible. We are live with the incredible Inkahuma pride, brought down a massive buffalo bull. He's not quite dead yet, but he's getting closer.
<clears throat> here I'm struggling to breathe more and more. So what's happening is his lungs are slowly filling with blood. So what actually happens now is he'll actually drown. You can see kicking is becoming weaker and weaker. She'll only let go once he's dead. So those claws are fully extended, gripped into that neck, and she's got a vice like clamp with her jaws around his nostrils. Again, not for sensitive viewers, but one must remember this is the future of the Inkahuma cubs. The fact that their mothers are able to hunt so successfully and hunt big prey successfully. And you can see the others starting to feed before that buffalo has expired. Now, Liss is wondering, will they eat before they go fetch the cubs? Well, one lioness has already beetled off back towards the cubs, so she might actually go fetch the cubs before feeding. So, difficult to say, it all depends on the situation. So, they were hungry, but they weren't too hungry. So they might they might go fetch the cubs before feeding. He's nearly, he's nearly gone. He's nearly gone to join the great buffalo herd in the sky. Sheila said the lioness is trying to suffocate with a nose hold, but the buffalo is breathing through its mouth. Will she actually succeed in suffocating it uh, with that nose hold? So Sheila, what she's actually doing is if she is on that nose hold, the, as she keeps biting in that little cavities back into that buffalo's lungs. That, so what's actually happening, she's not suffocating, she's not suffocating the buffalo, buffalo, she's drowning it. There we go, you can see the blood around her mouth and you can hear that buffalo breathing. So the more she bites into that nose and the more blood that starts flowing down the nasal cavity 
back into the lungs is what's going to kill that buffalo. You can actually hear how it's breathing now. It's starting to almost gurgle. See those leg kicks are getting weaker and weaker. I don't think it's going to be too long now. No. Send it. She's just changing her grip. See how she's biting like that again? It's to get that bleeding going, to get more blood going down into those nostrils. Now that, coupled with the massive loss of blood this buffalo is suffering from its behind. And the two other lionesses have really opened up his rump. Actually, almost look like they're almost there we go, you can see that into his stomach cavity already. So that, yeah, there you go, his intestines are coming out already. So that massive trauma uh, and loss of blood at the base, coupled with that, well, not suffocation, that drowned grip of the lioness in the front. Um, you probably find this buffalo has been in shock for some time and, and I hope not feeling anything. So D is wondering why are the lionesses using that nose hold as opposed to the more traditional throat grip and the suffocation grip. Now with a big buffalo bull like this D, you'll probably find his larynx is too wide. So when lions grab something around the neck, there's a, a gap between their their teeth so between their so they've got their canines which act as an anchor and then their premolars and their molars now between those two there's a big gap and that gap is actually specially designed to pinch close uh, the larynx of animals now with the lioness you'll probably find that this these buffalo this big buffalo bull his larynx is too big for her to, to actually get that grip going. So she's unable to get or pinch the, the larynx closed. So that is why you'll often see lioness prefer the, the, nose, the nose hold on buffalo uh, as opposed to the throat hold, the more traditional what we see with lions and smaller prey. Now, as you can see, her, her paw there below the mouth, it almost looks like she's holding its mouth closed, but it's not. She's just using that as an anchor. You can see the mouth's still open. Every now and then she gives a little shake or bite. It's, it's to, again to increase that blood flow into the lungs. I'm not sure what time this started. Do you know, Zander? <laughs> no idea. The excitement took over. Um, but oh, I missed that. How long did that It's been 40 minutes since they started, jump, started jumping on this buffalo. Now, it's probably been a bit shorter because of the drought, but I have seen 
it take nearly two hours to kill a big buffalo bull. And that was with a bigger pride of lions in the Nkumas. But that buffalo was in prime condition. So these buffalo bulls, uh, I could only see bulls, I didn't see any other buffalo as they charged past us. And uh, these bulls are old, past prime, and this drought would have definitely had an effect on them. And it does make them an easier, easier target. But by no means an easy target. Yeah, the breathing getting much shallower. And you can hear that. And you can see she's, she's putting extra force on, she's biting harder now. I don't think it's long now. See those yeah. breathing getting much, much shallower. The, the, almost the leg kicks now are almost non existent. Buffalo finally expires. The leg kicks very, very weak now. I don't think it's long to go now before this, into the end of this poor big boy. You can see she almost senses it's close to the end. Now, as I said, it's an old buffalo bull. Wingnut's wondering how old. I guess probably between 12 and 14 years old. Uh, so past his prime. And about 10, 11, they're pushed out of the, the big breeding herds. And they live in these bachelor groups. And these Inkahumas have been specializing in these bachelor groups of buffalo this dry season. Now that is actually stomach content on her shoulder there that sprayed out of the intestines as they pulled them out. There we go, you can see that on her neck there. It's not blood, it's buffalo stomach content that sprayed out as the other lioness pulled out the intestines.
And there's a very good chance there'll be a male lion here by tomorrow. If there are any in the vicinity, they definitely would have heard that buffalo's distress calls. Now, Meg's wondering, can another lioness take over the nose grip? It is possible, Meg, but unlikely in this situation where the buffalo is down. You can hear now the breathing is getting very, very difficult. Going to become sometimes some big gaps between the, the breaths. Hi, William in Oregon. William would like to know. Why do they always seem to start eating it from the rear end? Well, with buffalo, it's the safe end because they, they'll start feeding or actually opening up that area to try weaken it during the hunt. And secondly, it's the nice, the rump, the nice tender, lots of meat there. So you'll find a lot of animals, um, especially cats, will, will start eating at the rear end, at the rump, because it in case they lose it to another lion or hyenas or whatnot, they get the most amount of meat in the shortest part of time without having to chew through any bones. Now, well, is that other lion that's going in to help or is she just going to start feeding? like the other lioness has come to expedite this proceedings. There you, go, you can see there's that stomach content oh, sorry, on that lioness's neck. Again, apologies to our sensitive viewers. It's nearly over. Even if she had to let go of that nose hold now, there's no way this poor boy would survive. not relinquished that grip on his nose since she got there.
and she won't till he takes his last breath. Now that crunch, crunch you hear is that lioness at the tail cutting open the skin. See how she's sliced the skin open there. You can actually see it's almost like someone's taken a pair of scissors and cut a perfectly straight line. Now her premolars are which what she's using to cut open to get to the skin to get to the meat are literally like a really sharp pair of side cutters. Now again, apologies to our sensitive viewers. This is live, this is raw, this is uncut, this is happening right now in the African bush. And if you are a little bit sensitive, just look away. It'll be over in about 10 or so minutes. The buffalo should be dead. And I know it is disturbing, but one must remember, this is the future for these lions. They've got eight little cubs to feed. So a big buffalo bull like this is a great catch for the evening. Still kicking. I can't be far now. Just trying to watch carefully to see when he starts stops breathing. Now sometimes you will have leg kicking after the animal is dead. It's just their nerves. The heart will still be pumping. See those look almost more like those nerve reactions, not coordinated. Yeah, I think he's expired. Have a look at his stomach, see if it still looks like it's breathing. Okay, let's move a little bit higher up onto the, there we go, onto that part of the stomach. I just want to have a look. And he's, 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 he's almost stopped breathing, but he's still alive. He's gasping. There we go, she's let him go. It's done. Here we go. Now she's going to lie down and have a well-earned rest before she even thinks about starting to feed. And here we go. One, two lionesses resting. The third eating. I wonder where the fifth in Kahuma is. Well, the fourth one, I think, might have gone back to fetch the cubs. Now, all that sniffing around earlier might have been after these buffalo. It's, it's, I wish, wouldn't it be nice if we could speak lion? What I find 
incredible with lions is the non-verbal communication. So how they read each other's body language. Oh, there comes the small intestine. So it's incredible that they're able to, to, to sort of maneuver and flank, all depending on the movement and body language of the other animals. And I think that's probably one of the most fascinating things for me about lions, is, is that non-verbal, that non-vocal, so not verbal, they can't speak, but that non-vocal communication. So of course lions have their vocal communications, their roars, their contact calls, but in the hunt they can't because it'll give away their position. And once they get that buffalo open, uh, generally they'll try to get for the, the sort of high value items, heart, kidney, lung, livers, high in vitamins and minerals, particularly the liver, high iron content. But as you can see, they're not fussy. Those are the intestines and that is stomach content coming out as she pulls through. She obviously doesn't eat that sort of half digested grass, what she's really after there is that the actual lining of the intestine. Now she doesn't want to eat, but now just because there's another line there, they will growl at you. I think she's going to lie down for a bit more. Well, she might head back, it is one of the mothers, she might head off to go fetch cubs. Or she might head off down towards Buffalo's Hook for a drink. There you go, she's walking straight towards Jamie. Now oh, she's changing her direction. And she might, maybe she's heading back towards the cups, who knows? I know you guys can still see that lioness with Jamie. I can't see her at all now. So there we go. We're with the two remaining lionesses. I wonder if she's going to go fetch those cubs. I think she's going to go for a drink at Buffalo's Hook first. Now the fact that there's almost zero fighting around this carcass means that these lions have been incredibly well fed over the last while and that is, the drought has definitely been aiding them. So normally in a situation like this, if these lions had been desperately hungry, there would be much 
growling, snarling and beating of each other uh, at, as they took down the buffalo and started feeding. Well, it seems like everyone's off. I'm sure one lioness will stay. The next one's off down the road. I can't see it. That is another one of the mothers that's moved away. There she goes. So there are four lionesses. Maybe it's only amber eyes left behind. And the three mothers have gone off to fetch the cubs. Let's have a look. at yeah, That doesn't look like a lactating lioness. So that means the missing lioness is the youngest female. Maybe she's off entertaining a Birmingham boy. So, the last time, or well, not the last time, the time before last year when we saw the Incahumas uh, grab a buffalo, it was Amber Eyes who was on the nose. This time it wasn't. So, there we go. That also answers that question. It's not always the same line in the same spot. Isn't this amazing? We're sitting here in the middle of the African bush live. And remember, if you have any questions about what just happened, about what's going on, remember to send them through to us at questions at wildearth.tv or use the hashtag Safari Live on Twitter. It's incredible, it's just sort of the excitement's down, the buffalo's down. It's sort of take a moment. I tend to get very excited over a butterfly. So imagine how excited I get when we get to see incredible behavior like that. And of course, a lot of people get worried and think we're all after the death and the, and the blood and the guts and the gore. It's not that. And so we get to see this incredible animal behavior that so few people in the world ever get to witness. And just guess what? We just witnessed it live. Now, D is wondering if a male lion came along, would this female leave? Well, not necessarily leave D, but um, she would probably have to leave her spot at the kill for him. And he might chase off, and they can be quite selfish, only liking to feed. By, them, by themselves. As I said, it'll be incredibly un unlikely that there won't be a male lion tomorrow. I think it's very likely there will be a male. Now, those big boys, they hear that buffalo go boo, and they come a jogging. So it took probably just under 50 or just under an hour for this buffalo to die, which is about normal 40 minutes to an hour. I'm sure a few of you are wondering where the hyenas are. Now, at the moment, the hyena clan has moved a bit further to the northwest. So we're not seeing them too much. But for hyenas to steal this kill from lions, you can work on an average of three hyenas to one lion. So there would have to be, if all five lionesses were present, there would have to be 15 hyenas for them to sort of mob the, the, the Inkahuma pride off this carcass. Now, if you add a male into the equation, the hyenas will stay away. It's very, very seldom 
and that the hyena is brave enough to take on a male lion. He's just that much stronger and that much more powerful than the females. drive back. Kitty cat luck seems to be with me still. Now from the incredible Incahumas across to James with the Kichwet Tembo pride I think. Let's see what they're up to. Well, that, everybody, is just astounding while we sit here with the sleeping lions. Well, one clean itself. Who would have thought it? Well, I suppose everybody who loves the Ninkapumas. They have pulled it out of the bag and killed a buffalo here in exactly as we wanted them to. Lion kills at night. How fantastic they have been. This bunch has been doing not a great deal. Um, since I last saw you, obviously we were stuck. Uh, that is not an uncommon occurrence for me. And what happened was, oh, sorry. We've got, <laughs> we're going straight back to South Africa. There's even more action going on. I've got cubs running into the kill. It doesn't make everything better than what we've just witnessed. It certainly makes us feel a little bit more comfortable about what we've just witnessed as eight hungry mouths mm. are mm. about to be fed. Mm. There they go. Off behind us, Dave. I think there's one on the right as well. I mean, on the left. Oh, there was. You could just hear it in the dark. everyone. I'm just going to wait until they've gone a little bit further behind me and then I'm going to turn our vehicle around and we'll catch up with them. Wow, what an intense night this has been. <laughs> Hoping there's nobody here. Hello. I'm going to go move very, very slowly and I'm just going to check behind me. And then Dave's going to provide me with that infrared light and it will take us to the cubs. Alright Dave, I'm in your hands now. <laughs> I'm driving blind. Here they go, over the ridge. I'm just going to make very, very sure that there's not one on the other side of us. I can see them up ahead. I'm not going very fast and I'm not racing to catch up with them because I don't want to risk. I can only see a couple of meters in front of me. So we're going really, really slowly. As the cubs make their way to a meal that the females worked incredibly, incredibly hard to get for them. Whoopsie, I think the road's a little bit to the left there. That's so amazing, the silhouettes of the lions in front of me. I don't know if we're going to be able to capture it. But there they all go. Little cubs. Isn't that incredible? With their amazing mothers. Calling, frolicking, playing, chasing each other around. In the higher spirits, the females just exhausted after that trial that they were put through. And the cubs bounding in anticipation of some very, very full bellies. 
pouncing on each other. And although it's very, very hard to watch an animal die like that, remembering that there are hungry little mouths to feed is definitely a comfort. Look at you, you little scamps. Hmm? Are you too gorgeous for words? <laughs> <laughs> the poor lionesses, they're so exhausted, and all the little ones want to do is play with them. It just goes to show that lioness that left earlier on in the hunt went straight to fetch the cubs as soon as she knew that that buffalo was going down. And those two lionesses went off to fetch them. <laughs> just little silhouettes in green. Amazing. Well done, Nkuhumas. Sorry, Mr. Buffalo. All right, let's jump on board with Brent as they make their way over in his direction. Here we go, the first of the cubs have arrived at the Buffalo Kill. Now, let's see, the first one, who's going to be the first one to rush towards the, the carcass? Get ready for some of the fiercest little sounds you've heard in a while. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, oh, eight. Now, as they get bigger, Auntie Amber is not going to be as tolerant as she once was. <laughs> Just checking it's not alive, Ma. Making sure you did your job. scuttling about. Happy cubbies. Now they seem so well fed they're more interested in playing than eating. Perfect, thanks yours. So here we go, as you can see, we are sitting absolutely in the pitch black. I cannot see a thing, and I'm looking at my monitor. What has that cub got at the back there? Is that my hat? No, I'm joking, it's not my hat. It's the tail, yes, I, I could have lost my hat, but he's stolen the tail. It's having a great game with it. Isn't this incredible? This infrared enables us to view cubs at night. Normally, no spotlights on cubs until they're about between six and eight months old. But with infrared, we remove. Look at him. <laughs> Looks very impressed with himself. Cheers, yours. Have a good evening. Yeah, thanks. It was awesome to have you here as well. Second time. So just saying goodbye to yours. That's the second time yours and I have seen the Inkahumas together take down the buffalo. Growling starting. Mm -hmm. 
Now Michael's wondering, are male cubs slightly more aggressive than females, especially around food? Well, generally, they can be, just because they're a bit bigger. And in lion society, quite often size goes a very long way. Now, wait, there's going to be, let's see how long it takes them before they get upset with each other and they can't share. As I said, they're so full, they're not really that worried about eating. Ears flat. No serious growling at each other just yet. Females moving back in. Hi, Jerry. Uh, Jerry's wondering how long it'll take for them to eat that entire carcass. Big bull like this, Jerry, and they're not too hungry, probably two to three days. Now it all depends if a male arrives, then of course the carcass won't last nearly as long. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I was expecting a lot more growling and snarling between the little guys. And they're obviously so fat on mom's milk. And all the buffalo, oh, buffalo that they've been caught over the last little while. It's more fun in games than feeding. <laughs> Who's the king of the buffalo? Yeah, more playing than actually eating going on here. It's practicing the throat grip on the, the buffalo's armpit. Bit of growling, just but not much. Frogs and a fiery neck night jar in the background. And of course we have an incredibly ecstatic Inkahuma Pride. If you've just happened to stumble upon us, this is live infrared viewing of a lion pride on a kill. And can you believe we watched them take down this buffalo live? You are watching with me at the exact same time. Isn't that incredible? We are able to bring you the immense and amazing animals from Africa live wherever you are, might be in the world. Remember, hashtag Safari Live or questions at wildearth.tv if you'd like to send us any questions. Now, 
Now, Doug in Connecticut's wondering, will the Cubs be able to break through that tough buffalo hide with their still young milk teeth? Probably not. Maybe in some of the softer spots on, on the belly, uh, but generally they will go like those ones there to where the lionesses have already opened up the carcass. Head in there. I can just sneak and sneak ahead in there. I said they're not particularly hungry, otherwise, there'd be a lot more snarling, growling, and swatting. Oh, that little one, he's practicing catching buffalo up front. Not interested in eating. I oh, know he's, he's caught and killed. He's happy. Yes, you big brave thing, you. We're going to sit here with the Kahumas, but let's go see what's happening in the Mara Triangle with James. Hello, everybody. Sorry about the very quick link last time, but I'm not actually sorry at all. You've got to go and watch the little Kahuma cubs arriving at their kill, and well-deserved it is for them indeed. Our cats, as you can see from the thermal imaging camera, are, well very tired but just behind them a herd of what Graham Wallington calls bogies the bogies have the wind from blowing sort of from the lions to them we think we can't really tell it seems to be swirling slightly but that is the potential hunt that might happen here if these lions can bring themselves to just wake up and do something other than nothing. There we are. Two sleeping on the left, one under a termite mind on the right, the other one lurking about here somewhere. Now we think this is four lionesses, we're going to vaguely conclude that they might be from something called the Art of Africa Pride. It's been very difficult to figure out what's going on because every time we thought we'd figured out what was happening, two more lionesses would, dis would appear. I'm assuming that we're not very far from where that zebra died, so I'm assuming two of these are perhaps the two that were at the zebra earlier. Then two more appeared as we got stuck and then, of course, I didn't want to get my boots dirty, so we sent Graham and um, Tyler and John Dre and William out to push the car up, and they did that very successfully. We then followed these lions, and they went to sleep, which is what they have done quite frequently here. I'm beginning to think that, A, they do quite a lot of killing during the daytime, and B, well, I mean, they hardly look like they're desperately hungry. So they do quite a lot of feeding during this time of the year and quite a lot of hunting during the day. But the Kichwatembo Pride, who knows what they're doing tonight? Who knows what the males are doing? We took a gamble on this bunch and, um, <laughs> well, is not quite paid off like the Inkahumas have. But, you know, if you've got vehicles traversing the entire continent of Africa, as we have at the moment, you're going to find at least one pride of lions intent on finding themselves some supper. If that pride of lions happens to have eight little cubs to feed, well, then they're probably even more likely to go hunting than they would be in this rather prey-rich environment. Let's have one last look at the fl... No, sorry. Graham, can we have one last look at the fleur? Thank you very much. Let's see where the... Um, See where the other they are. There, we're back on that herd of potential bogies <laughs> who are just twinkling very pleasantly off towards the east. <laughs> Hello, Lisa. A very good question from you. Um, you want to know how much time or how often I think these various prides in the Mara cross paths. Lisa, you know, 
I mean, I, I, I have simply haven't been here long enough to say, but I do think from what we've learned over the brief time we've been here, that there is so much, um, so much upheaval when the migration comes through, so much kind of you know, unusual behaviour when the migration comes through that I would imagine it's quite difficult to pre to predict because certainly the Kitra Tembo Pride. Um, I thought we, we've seen them as far. Have we seen them this far? Yes, we have. We've said, well, we haven't. We haven't seen them quite far, this, quite this far south. But um, I think they have been seen certainly this far south. And it would make their territories pretty small if they never came across each other. So I think it's rather fascinating. I don't want to put my um, head on a block, as it were, and try and guess what's going on here. But yes, they, they certainly could. Um, they certainly, they certainly could come across each other, but they do call a lot. You know, if you sit on top where we're staying at Ngamari, you sit on the deck in the evenings. There's calling from all over this place, so maybe they their territories shrink during this time of the year. It could happen with very sort of prey-rich areas. That could definitely be the case, and then maybe they get a little bit bigger and spread out from each other uh, when the wildebeest and zebra and eland and Thompsons go. go wandering down south into the Serengeti. But I've got to tell you, it'd be wonderful to spend a year here and figure out exactly what is going on. And of course, the only way you can do that is to spend an extended period with these animals. That one is alive. You can see there it's breathing. Aqua, a nice question from you about whether or not these prides have smaller or larger territories than the ones in the Sabi sand. From what I've seen here, I'm going to say they're slightly smaller. That would make perfect sense given the prey density here. The prey density here is, I would say, probably quite a lot higher than it is in the Sabi sand. At the moment, of course, we're in the middle of a drought in the Sabi sand, or it's just kind of broken, and so things are A, weak, and B, coming out of the Kruger into the Sabi sand because there's pumped artificial water. And so, you know, it's probably relative, no, it's still not equitable even at this stage. So I'm going to say I think it would make sense that the prides here would have smaller territories. Um, the Nkuhuma prides territory is probably about 5,000 hectares, which is just over 10,000 acres. And... I would have said the prides here from what, I mean, this is based on combined experience of about eight days here. I would say that the pride territories here are probably, and I'm, this is a wild guess, but about four, maybe three or four thousand hectares each. So between, say, nine thousand and eleven thousand acres. Now, whether that situation persists, when the migration moves away, I don't know. You see, I mean, in the Sabi sand, the, uh, you know,